sovereignty inherent in there because the sovereignty is in the identity. And the identity is a specified natal name or nationality because the laws come from nations. You see? Now remember when Bedford had said, um, now Bedford was the head of Ku Klux Klan. Uh, they established, he was an army, army general. They established the Klan. It was a part of, actually, the Klan, Ku Klux Klan was a part of the United States military. And the Ku Klux Klan originated as a, a part of the United States military, and it did the dirty work that the United States government uh, uh, itself didn't do, so it could deny complicity. Just like, you know, I hire you as a contractor, and I want you to go poison his wells, because we plan to steal his land. But I fund you out of a black box bu budget, but I don't know you if somebody catches you. This is what the United States, did, not the United States, but the US democracy did with the, uh, uh, the Klan. Now remember, if you read uh, the, uh, the, the Kyklos Charter, it is really very honorable with the protection of the women and the children, etc. It's really very honorable. Um, and if you study the uh, uh, um, the principles of the of the Kyklos, uh, and then you look at when the, the complaints were were made about the unnatural relationship between the Negroes and the government, you must understand what they were actually saying, because the Negro is a fiction, just like a corporation. And what their argument was is that you cannot take a fiction or a, a fictional people, do you understand, made into a fiction, corporate, and inject them into a sovereign body politic and give them the rights of citizens when it can't happen. It's just non-existent. They were not a part of government. Do, do you, you can't make somebody who's not a party to an order of government a party to a government and giving them, them the rights of citizenship. It can't happen. It's unlawful. It's not natural. Do you see what I'm saying? But people who don't understand that would look at the Ku Klux Klan, as many scholars often have, and accuse them of, quote unquote, what they like to call racism and prejudice and other things, when actually they were absolutely correct. The deal of it is the, the, the truth need to be known that the Negro thing is a fiction. It is a franchise created by the sale of people in forced servitude to the Congress who franchised it to private corporations who the plantation owners incorporated and later called themselves states, absent of sovereignty, not the organic states. This is where your conflict comes in. Those corporate corporations actually have no sovereignty whatsoever. You see the conflict in our concepts of how to look at them. Exactly. Just like you, you'll see a lot of um, a lot of branded persons, a branded uh, natural persons who are operating not knowing that they are listed as corporate persons. So there's a distinction. All right. So when you have persons who are arguing reparations, who are on the public rolls, who are on government documents as corporations, they're arguing principles that apply to natural persons. It's Categorically, it can't apply. No such Negro, black, or colored people exist on the planet Earth. It's a fiction. So how can just no different than if you were arguing if a fictional state try to say that you injure it, and you argue before the court that a state is a fiction that can't be injured, just like Santa Claus is a fiction. Can Santa Claus be injured? Can we sue for a tort for someone who slandered Santa Claus? I'm, the floor is open. Can we sue? someone for slandering Santa Claus? No. Can we get reparations for Santa Claus because someone stole his suit? Well, you can't get reparations for Negroes, Blacks, and Colors because no such people exist. They're 14th Amendment constructs. They're artificial entities of Moors who were put in forced servitude whose birthright was removed and these names were coined by Dutch slave masters in order to incorporate them into the corporate structure of government to hide the fact that the U.S. corporations were still maintaining slavery. That's all. That's all. But that's, that, to add to that, that's right through the whole world. Exactly. They exported it. Right. That's why they had to export the dollar. 
which is not a dollar. Do you understand? This is why they had to export the fiat and why it was necessary for the U.S. corporations to establish despotic governments around the planet to support the fiat because they were in possession of the most powerful nation on the planet, i.e. the Moors, Morocco. Are we clear? See, so you have to understand much of the politics that goes on around the world is absolutely tied to us. It's not, brother. Yeah, isn't that part of the conflict where a lot of um, Muslim countries are against usury? It's exactly correct. And so if there's a conflict where, you know, the United States, whatever you want to call it, the fiction is trying to impose fiat uh, onto nations that know that no, that it's a fraud. It's a fraud, and not only that, it goes against the religious principles. Well, and see, now, let's qualify this, because there's another fiction that goes on in the world today that needs to be qualified, i.e. religion. Please do. Um, religion is actually science of life, having nothing to do with any worship system whatsoever. When it's usually presented to the world, it's usually presented in that aspect, which causes biases. Religion and its principles, and its fundamental principles, are universal all over the planet. Uh, we understand. What has happened is denominational uh, political agendas have been layered into institutions called religious institutions that are actually political agendas. And this is most what most the common people deal with. When you look into history, world history, government, law, etc., and they make reference to East and West, Occidental and Oriental, etc., uh, or they say Muslim or Christian, they're not talking religion, they're talking political realms, political economic realms. And so what has happened, you, you must look at, um, as far as the rest of the world is concerned, including, quote unquote, even European or what you would call Christian countries who are technically allies with the United States Republic, but are compromised by the U.S. democracy that has taken over the United States Republic. Yet there still as an allegiance if you understand, there's a political allegiance because of colonialism. However, they don't even trust the U.S. democracy because they know what they've done. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Which is why, the, how do you say, the, um, the U.S. democracy tried to kill de Gaulle in around, I think it was 65 or something like it, President de Gaulle of France. They called it the Day of the Jackal. They set up assassination for him because he would not accept the, the new fiat that the U.S. corporations was printing, they wanted the silver certificates, or either gold and silver, in trade, and he wouldn't accept them, and so they tried to kill him. They tried to say it was some lunch guys and all that stuff, but it's actually U.S. democracy persons that tried to assassinate the president of France. This is why there's a breach between the, U the U.S. democracy corporations and France today. Like you see, a lot of the um, politicians in in the U.S. corporations always criticizing France today, while they're still out, allies, there's a little breach. It's sort of like, because they're colonial powers and they have done a lot of stuff together, that's their, where their allegiance is. But because they also know what they have done to us and what they've done to a lot of other people who they befriended, they don't trust them. <laughs> you get the whole point? So it's so, sort of like a, a, con, a conflict amongst thieves type thing. Yep, do you, do you, now, do, do you understand what I'm saying? So, um, but the alliance is necessary because they're colonial powers. Now, as far as the rest of the uh, uh, civilized world is concerned, uh, you also have the conflict of them not wanting to become niggers. The rest of the world has, have, has studied and saw what the, uh, the, uh, the Europeans have done in North America in betraying the, per the principles of government that the Moors had set up here with the United States Republic and the scene how they tried to wipe us out of history and steal the land and how they started designating us you know as Indians and Negroes and blacks and everything else to divide us both against each other and, and separate us out of government and displace us from the land although they can't deport us because they're home so a lot of the lies that they've created that now economically affect the rest of the world the rest of the world is not going to let that happen to them at any cost so this is really the root of the conflict that you see going on right now. When you look at the issues of what's going on in Bosnia, et cetera, in Serbia, et cetera, all of those are actually res residuals 
from ancient wars between Muslims and the Christians, even though most of the people, melanation has been blended. But, but actually those wars go back between the wars between the Muslims and the Christians. Even back to near, you know, the Battle of Poitiers near France, uh, Battle of Tours, whereas the, um, they put the Moors in check, uh, 732, and had they not be, defeated the Moors then, all of Europe would be Islamic today. So you got to look at a lot of the conflicts that are going on in Europe today have absolute ties to the Moors and the Christian Wars, which is why we established the United States to stop that. But because there were certain ones who were intended to subvert that is why you don't see the other side of the United States history, i.e. the truth about us, and which is why, you know, part of why we're here. And even part of what is the problem with what you call the money now. And if you don't know that history, you, you can't fix this problem. You know, and what has happened, even what you, you'll see, a lot of the principles of sovereignty are spoken of of many uh, European groups in North America, etc. And they, 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 uh, many of them have claimed uh, the sovereignty on white Christian, right? You've heard that, right? Uh, but there is no sovereignty in there. The sovereignty is in the nationality. You see the whole point? And, but a lot of them lose consciousness. Uh, and it, and it's, it's like it's the unfortunate dynamics of the same thing that happened to us as Moors during our foreparents in our, in our days of power, of abusing of, of power, that caused the, our fall is the same thing that's continuing, which means we didn't fix the thing yet. It's the same identical problem. Taxation without representation, the whole game. Do, do you see what's happening? Now, and so, whereas um, when they teach history here in North America, they'll talk about uh, the majesty, etc., being all England, like that, right? And the U.S. breaking off from England, that type of thing. Well, no, it was us. We're the red coats. Do you understand? I know. I know how. I know I was hitting you. But the real deal, we're the red coats. The Moors are the red coats. We're the brutish Moors. The Danes. That's us. The Druids. That's us. See, there was so much effort to block out our history that now the world is screwed up when they look back at the history to try to fix what's wrong. In stealing our birthright, they have upset the whole world. Now it's turning back on them. They're trying to fix something with, the, with gears missing, which means the sovereignty can't be claimed because it doesn't belong to them. Sovereignty belongs to us. Meaning that in a sovereign, in a sovereign seal of the government, in order, in order for the right to be restored, the rightful heir must be restored. But because the U.S. democracy has maintained servitude and they've institutionalized it, they have made the people so ignorant that the, the few who did have some education, which is usually the white middle class who call themselves white from the white party, they don't know it's a white party. They think it's an identity. Do you, do you, see, the, do you see the dynamics? Like you see the middle class, in, generally in North America, they call themselves white, correct? That's a political adhesion. That's not their identity. That comes from the Uyghur Party, 1853 to 1863, 1854, 1863, right here in Philadelphia, with the Knights of Columbus, Columbus who goes Klan Oath. The Uyghur Party took on the term of what you call the Republican Party, which is the white party. But because it's a caste system, and now as people became ignorant, they think it's an identity, just like the Moors who were defeated thought that black is an identity. Negroism is some kind of identity. All of that is a fiction. In the process, they lost their birthright. Are we clear? Meaning that, like, what, what's your nationality? My grandfather was from Romania. But... All right, now you're Romanian, right? All right, so now you're... Your, your grandfather would, your birthright would be in Romania. But technically from a world position, from the, from the politics of the world, you would be Muslim. Do you understand? You would, yes, you would. You would come under Eastern power. You, I know what you, still, we're Jews too. See, you have to understand that. 
you see, this is where the conflict comes in. The conflict comes in because people's history was buried by inquisitionists and colonists, and it was twisted, and by people blending, by people blending, and because the white and black thing has been taught in North America and exported to the world, people look at people from an identity perspective by complexion. That's fictional, totally fictional. It is your nationality and your sovereignty, your birthright, which is the issue. Are we very clear? Yes, then your birthright, your sovereignty, being born somewhere. In other words, if I asked you what was your nationality here, what would you say? That's what you would say. I would say that you're wrong, and that's a fraud. America's a continent, not a nation. Does it take a lunchbox to figure that out? You see the game that's been played? You see how they have dumbed the people down, and now you've lost the birthright? That's the key. Can I clarify? Clarification? clarification? Yes. The name American is derived from the name Baru, and it is another pronunciation, another spelling for Moroccan. So one who's an American is one who's of, of Moroccan descent. So we must understand the etymological origin of the name American. So if you're saying you're American, you're saying you're of Moroccan descent. All right? And the name American is not derived from the name America Stescucci, as we have been indoctrinated to believe. So we got to clarify the origins yes. of the name American. Yes, it's origins from actually Mu, Maru, Mary, Amuru, Amrak, Amarkesh. Do you understand? Maghrib, al -Aqsa. Morocco, the most extreme west. We're going to have to close out. Um, but I trust that we did um, share with you some principles. But you must understand, in order to fix this thing, you must qualify everything that you sign with those persons who are party to the usurpation of the United States Republic, i.e., those people who are in operation with the U.S. Democracy Corporation, which is a separate entity from the United States Republic. Peace.